Some hours later, we are in the entrance hall of the Grand Ducal Palace. And here come the members of the theatrical company now dressed in their Troilus and Cressida costumes. Bearing garlands and playing musical instruments, they herald the return of Ludwig and Julia from their marriage ceremony, which has just taken place. Ducal heartstrings touches. Allow me to present your new grand duchess. Should she offend, you'll graciously excuse her and kindly recollect I didn't choose her. that I may mention it's my sovereign intention to revive the classic memories of Athens at its best for the company possesses all the necessary dresses and the course of quiet cramming will supply us with the rest we've a choir hypothematic that is valley operatic who respond to the cruelty of that cultivated age and a clever chorus master all but captured pretty Carter would accept as a choragus of the early attic stage this return to classic ages is considered in their way which are always calculated by the day or by the week and I'll pay them if they'll back me all in obboloi and rack me which they'll get if they prefer it at the Kalen that are Greek at this junction I may mention that this erudition sham is but classical pretension the result of petty cram periphrastic method burning to this audience is turning I admit this show of learning is the fruit of petty cram <laughs> In the period Socratic, every dining room was attic, which suggestion architecture of a topsy turvy kind. There they satisfy their thirst on a recherche called a wrist, on which is what they call their lunch, and so may you if you're inclined. As they gradually got some, they trepass by frost on foton, which is attic for a steady and a conscientious drink. But they mix their wine with water, which I'm sure they didn't order, and we modern Saxons know a trick was two of that, I think. Then came rather risky dances under certain circumstances. 
circumstances which would shock that worthy gentleman, the license of the place, corribantian maniac, dionysiac, or bacchic, and the dissidentic rebels of those undecorous days. And perhaps I'd better mention, less alarming you I am, that it isn't our intention to perform a dithyram. It displays a lot of talking, which is always very shocking. And of course, I'm only mocking at the prevalence of prem. It displays a lot of talking, which is always very shocking. And of course, I'm only mocking at the prevalence of prem. Yes, on reconsideration, there are customs of that nation which are not in strict accordance with the habits of our day. And when I come to codify their rules, I mean to modify, or Mrs. Grundy perhaps may have a word or two to say. For they had the Macintoshes, or Grellas, or Galoshes, and the shower with their dresses must have played the very deuce. And it must have been unpleasing when they caught the bits of pleasing, for it seems the pocket handkerchiefs, they didn't know the use. They wore little underclothing, scarcely any. Anything or nothing, and the dress of coat and silk was quite transparent in design. Well, in fact, in summer weather, something like the altogether, and it's there I rather fancy I shall have to draw the line. And again, I wish to mention that this erudition sham is but classical pretension, the result of deadly cram. Yet my classical or aggressive, if you'll pardon the possessive, is exceedingly impressive when you're passing an exam. Yes, it's classical or aggressive, if you'll pardon the possessive, is exceedingly impressive when you're passing an exam. Comedian whom the law backs to sovereign rank is promptly elevated. He takes it with its incidental drawbacks. So Julia and I are duly made.
that everybody has gone and you are happily and comfortably married, I want to have a few words with my newborn husband. Yes, I expect you'll often have a few words with your newborn husband. Well, what is it? Uh, why, I've been thinking that as you and I have to play our parts for life, it is most essential that we should come to a definite understanding as to how they shall be rendered. Now, I've been considering how I can make the most of the Grand Duchess. Have you? Well, if you'll take my advice, you'll make a very fine part of it. <laughs> Why, that's quite my idea. I shouldn't make it one of your hoity-toity vixenish viragos. Oh, you think not? Oh, no, I am quite clear about that. I should make her a tender, gentle, submissive, affectionate, but not too affectionate, child wife, timidly anxious to coil herself into her husband's heart, but kept in check by an awestruck reference for his exalted intellectual qualities and his majestic personal appearance. Oh. Is that your idea of a good part? Oh, yes. A wife who regards her husband's slightest wish as an inflexible law and who ventures but rarely into his august presence unless, uh, which would happen seldom, he should summon her to appear before him. A crushed, despairing violet whose blighted existence would culminate all too soon in a lonely and pathetic death scene. A fine part, my dear. Yes, uh, there's a good deal to be said for your view of it. Now, there are some actresses whom it would fit like a glove. I wish I'd married one of them. But, you see, I must consider my temperament. For instance, my temperament... Now, Julia, come consider it from this dainty point of view. A timid, tender, feminine gender prompts to coyly coo. Yet silent seeking, seldom speaking till she's spoken to. A comfy, cozy, rosy, posy, innocent ingenue. The part you're suited to give the deuce her due. A sweet old Jiminy, Miminy, Piminy, innocent ingenue. I'm much obliged to you, I don't think that would do. A so sweet old Jiminy, Miminy, Piminy, innocent ingenue. You forget my special magic in a high dramatic sense. Lies in situation tragic, undeniably intense. As I've justified promotion in the histrionic art, I submit to you my notion of a first-rate part. Well, let us see your notion of a first-rate part. I have a rival. Frenzy thrilled, I find you both together. My heart stands still, with horror chilled. Hard as the millstone nether, and soft and sly and slim, sneaky, crawly, creepy, weak, wakey. I track her on her homeward way as panther tracks her fated prey. I fly at her soft white throat with a lily white laughing lemon. On her agonized gaze, I gloat with the glee of a dancing demon. My rival, she, I have no doubt of her. So I hold on till the breath is out of her. Till the breath is out of her. And then, remorse, remorse, oh, cold and pleasant cough. Avant, avant, that lifeless form I gaze upon, that face. Still warm, but weirdly wan. Those eyes of blast I contemplate. And then, alas, too late, too late, I find she is your aunt. Then mad, 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 with fancies wild, chimerical, now Sorrowful, silent, sad. Now Halabalu hysterical. <laughs> but whether I'm sad or whether I'm glad, mad, 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 mad. This calls for the resources of a high class heart and satisfies my notion of a first rate part. And that's it,
I can't fix, my dear. This proves I'm not a sham. It won't, it's only the laundry mark, my dear. Express your grief, propose. I shan't, the tone I never allow, my love. Rudolph at once, produce. I can't, he isn't at home just now, my love. He isn't at home just now. He isn't at home just now. Disappointment, I am sorry, unaffectedly, but yesterday that nobleman expired quite unexpectedly. <laughs> Well, it is a delicate combination of both effects. It is intended to express inconsolable grief for the decease of the late Duke and a valiant joy at the accession of his successor. I am his successor, and permit me to present to you my Grand Duchess. Your Grand Duchess? Oh, Your Highness. Who's frump? Hmm. A recent creation, probably. We were married only half an hour ago. Exactly. I thought she seemed new to the position. Mum, I don't know who you are, but I flatter myself I can do justice to any part on the very shortest notice. My dear, under the circumstances, you are doing admirably, and you'll improve with practice. Oh? It's so difficult to be a lady when one isn't born to Am I to stand this? Am I not to be allowed to pull her to pieces? No, 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 it isn't Greek. Be a violet, I beg. And now, tell me all about this distressing circumstance. How did the Grand Duke die? He perished nobly in a statutory duel. In a statutory duel? But that's only a civil death. And the act expires tonight, and then he will come to life again. Well, no. Anxious to inaugurate my reign by conferring some inestimable boon upon my people, I signalized this occasion by reviving the law for another hundred years. For another hundred years? Then set the merry joy bells ringing. Let festive epithalamia resound through these ancient halls. Cut the satisfying sandwich. Broach the exhilarating marsala. And let us rejoice today, if we never rejoice again. But I don't think I quite understand. We have already rejoiced a great deal. Happy man. You little wreck of the extent of the good things you are in for. When you killed Rudolph, you adopted all his overwhelming responsibilities. Know then that I, Caroline von Krakenfeld, am the most overwhelming of them all. But stop, stop. I have just been married to somebody else. Yes, ma'am, to somebody else, ma'am. Do you understand, ma'am, to somebody else? Do keep this young woman quiet. She, she fidgets me. Fidgets you. Be a violet, a crushed, despairing violet. Oh, do you suppose I intend to give up a magnificent part without a struggle? My good girl, she has the law on her side. Let us both bear this calamity with resignation. If you must struggle, go away and struggle in the seclusion of your chamber. Oh! 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 Now away to the wedding we go, to the tom and the charioteers. No kind of reluctant we show to embark on a married career. The Julia's emotion may flow in the form of impetuous tears. To a wedding we legally go, so summon, so summon the charioteers. To the wedding we legally go, so summon, so summon the charioteers.
it's of no use. I can't wait any longer. At any risk, I must gratify my urgent desire to know what is going on. Why, what's that? Surely I see a wedding procession winding down the hill, dressed in my Troilus and Cressida costumes. That's Ludwig's doing. I see how it is. He found the time hang heavy on his hands and is amusing himself by getting married to Lisa. No, it can't be to Lisa, for here she is. I really cannot stand seeing my Ludwig married twice in one day to somebody else. Lisa, oh. come here. Don't be a little fool. I, I want you. Oh. 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 Why, what's the matter with the little donkey? One would think she saw a ghost. But he, he's not marrying Lisa. Whom is he marrying? Julia, I see it all. Oh, the scoundrel. He had to adopt all my responsibilities and he's shabbily taken advantage of the situation to marry the girl I'm engaged to. But no, it can't be Julia, for here she is. I've made up my mind. I won't stand it. I'll send in my notice at once. Julia, oh, what a relief. <gasps> then you've not married Ludwig. You are still true to me. Oh. No, no, don't run away. Listen to me. Are you all crazy? What would you with me, Spectre? Oh, ain't his eyes sepulchral? And ain't his voice hollow? What are you doing out of your tomb at this time of day, apparition? I do wish I could make you girls understand that I'm only technically dead. And that physically I'm as much alive as I ever was in my life. Oh, but it's an awful thing to be haunted by a technical bogey. You won't be haunted much longer. The law must be on its last legs, and in a few hours I shall come to life again, resume all my social and civil functions, and claim my darling as my blushing bride. Oh, then you haven't heard. My love, I've heard nothing. How could I? There are no daily papers where I come from. Oh, why, Ludwig challenged Rudolf and won, and now he's Grand Duke, and he's revived the law for another century. What? But you're not serious. You're only joking. My good sir, I'm a light-hearted girl, but I don't chaff bogey. Well, that's the meanest dodge I've ever heard of. Chevy trick, I call it. But you don't mean to say that you're going to cry off. I really can't afford to wait until your time is up. You know I've always set my face against long engagements. Then defy the law and marry me now. We will fly to your native country, and I'll play broken English in London as you play broken German here. No. These legal technicalities cannot be defied. Situated as you are, you have no power to make me your wife. At best, you could only make me a widow. Then be my widow. My little, dainty, winning, winsome widow. <laughs> now, what would be the good of that? Why, you goose, I should marry again within the month. <laughs> The love's lingering ember has faded in gloom. You cannot neglect to remember a voice from the tomb that stern supernatural diction should act as a solemn restriction, although by a mere legal fiction, a voice from the tomb. A voice from That I stutter and choose me, it withers my bloom. With awful emotion, it thrills me, that voice from the tomb. Oh, specter, won't anything lay you? No pain to gain I or gain say thee. In this case, I cannot obey thee. The voice from the tomb. The voice from the tomb. Good day. Oh, I have to be 
approaching upon our joy encroaching some rascal come approaching who's heard that wine we're broaching Every statesman 
on orders that Prince of Monte Carlo. The Prince of Monte Carlo, who is so very particular, has heard that you're all so for ceremonious pictures. Therefore he lets you know by word of mouth or regular that Prince of Monte Carlo, who is so very particular, that Prince of Monte Carlo, so Mediterranean water, has come here to bestow on you of Monte Carlo. The Prince of Monte Carlo, he lets you know he did to be so his beautiful daughter. His Highness we know not. Nor the locality in which is situate his principality. But as he guesses by some odd fatality, this is the shop for cut and dried formality. Let him appear, he'll find that we're remarkable for cut and dried formality. That he's gone, I have a plan. I'll tell you all the plot of it. He wants formality. He shall have a lot of it. Now, if you'll all do exactly as I say, he'll have a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we're all behind the curtains and you hear them, <laughs> conceal yourselves. And when I give the cue, spring out on him. You all know what to do. Magnificent array, in costumes which we fired by the day. Mama, very well known costume. I am the very well known costume. Yeah. The brilliant star of print should make a show. It's a rule that never. Yeah. <laughs> 
in time to compel Duke Rudolph to fulfill the terms of his marriage contract. Another hour and we should have been too late. Yes, Papa. And if you hadn't fortunately discovered a means of making an income by honest industry, we should never have got here at all. Very true. Confined for the last two years within the precincts of my palace by an obdurate book bootmaker who held a warrant for my arrest, I devoted my enforced leisure to a study of the doctrine of chances, mainly with the view of ascertaining whether there was the remotest chance of my ever going out for a walk again. And this led to the discovery of a singularly fascinating little round game, which I have called roulette, and by which, in one sitting, I won no less than 5,000 francs. My first act was to pay my uh, bootmaker, my second to engage a good, useful working set of second-hand nobles, and my third, to hurry you off to Fennec half Fennec as fast as a train de luxe could carry us. Yes, and a pretty job lot of second-hand nobles you scraped together. <laughs> pretty, you think? Hmm, I don't know. I should say tolol, my love, only tolol. They're not wholly satisfactory. There's a certain air of unreality about them. They are not convincing. But, my good friend, what can you expect for 18 pence a day? Now, take this peer, for instance. What the deuce do you call him? Him? Oh, he's a swell. He's the Duke of Riviera. Oh, he's a duke, is he? Well, that's no reason why he should look so confoundedly haughty. The affable fur. Oh. Hmm, that's better. Mm. Now, who's this with his moustache coming off? Uh, why, you're, um, uh, why Count Mentone, ain't you? Best if I know. Oh. It's right here on my sword belt. Yeah. Viscount meant one. Then why don't you say so? Hold yourself up. You ain't carrying sandwich boards now. Now, once and for all, you peers, when His Highness arrives, don't stand like sticks, but appear to take an intelligent and sympathetic interest in what's going on. Well, you needn't say anything, but let your gestures be in accordance with the spirit of the conversation. Now, take the word from me. Affability. <sighs> Submission. Huh? Surprise. Come on. Surprise. Hmm? Oh. Huh. Shame. Huh? Grief. Joy. Oh, come on now, all together. Ah! Ha, ha. That's better. You can do it if you like. But, Papa, where in the world is the court? There is positively no one here to receive us. I can't help feeling that Rudolph wants to get out of it because I'm poor. He's a miserly little wretch, that's what he is. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. I would rather describe him as an enthusiastic collector of coins of the realm. And we must not be too hard upon a numismatist if he feels a certain disinclination to part with some of his really very valuable specimens. It's a pretty hobby. I've often thought I should like to collect some coins myself. Papa! I'm sure there's someone behind that curtain. I saw it move. Then no doubt they're coming. Now mind you, peers, haughty affability combined with a sense of what is due to your exalted ranks, or I'll fine you half a franc each. Upon my soul, I will.
Now, what do you think of that? That is our official ceremonial for the reception of visitors of the very highest distinction. Well, it's very quaint. Very curious indeed. Prettily put it, too. Prettily put it. Would you like to see how we say goodbye to visitors of distinction? That ceremony is also performed with the foot. Really, this tone. Uh, perhaps you have not completely grasped the situation. Not altogether. Ah, uh, then I'll give you a lead over. I am the father of the Princess of Monte Carlo. Doesn't that convey any idea to the Grand Ducal mind? Nothing definite. Hmm, very odd. Never mind, try again. Uh, this is the daughter of the Prince of Monte Carlo. Do you take? No, not yet. Go on, don't give up. I dare say it'll come presently. Very odd. Well, never mind, try again. Uh, Twenty years ago, little doddle doddle. Two little doddle doddles. Happy father, hers and yours. Proud mother, yours and hers. Ah, now you take. I see you do. I see you do. Nothing is more annoying than to feel that you're not equal to the intellectual pressure of the conversation. I wish you'd say something intelligible. You uh, didn't expect me? No, no, no. I grasped that. Thank you very much indeed. No, I did not expect you. Oh, I thought not. <laughs> At last I have escaped from my enforced restraint. Oh, no, 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 no. no, no. You misunderstand me. I mean, I've paid my debts. Oh. <laughs> Take my advice when deep in debt, set up a bank and play roulette. At once distrust you surely lull, and look the pigeon and the gull. The bird will stake his every franc in wild attempt to break the bank. But you may stake your life and limb, the bank will end by breaking him. Allons encore un garçon fiesta, vos louis d'or, vos charettes. Hola, 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 hola. Allons la classe, la bourse passe, la banque se casse. Rien ne va plus. Le 17 mois, un père et manque. Oh la, oh la, vive la banque. For every time the board you spin, the bank is bound to win. For every time the board you spin, the bank is bound to win. A cosmic game is this roulette. The little ball, the true coquette, a maiden coy whom numbers woo, whom six and thirty suitors sue. Of all complexions, two good lack, for some are red and some are black, and some must be extremely green, for half of them are not nineteen. Allons encore, garçon fiesta, pour Louis d'or, pour Charette. Hola, 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 hola. Allons la foule, ça roule, ça roule, le son s'écoule. Rien ne va plus. Le 35 août, un père et passe. Très bien, étudiant de la classe. The model says when you begin, the bank is bound to win. The model says when you begin, the bank is bound to win. The little balls are flat in bread. She flirts with black, she flirts with red. From this to that, she hops above, then back to this as if in doubt. To call her thoughtless word unkind, the child is making up her mind. For all the world, like all the rest, we pretendant will pay the best. Allons encore, car son fiesta, pour Louis d'or, pour charrette. Hola, 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 hola. Mais faites-vous, je, qui perce fuit au temps chardi, car aujourd'hui, rien ne va plus. Tra la la la, la double zéro, vous perdez tout, mais nos plein air. Where are at last the ball tops in, the bank is bound to win. The bank is bound to win. My darling, I'm afraid that even now you don't quite realize who I am. Why, you forward little hussy, how dare you? Oh, you mustn't do that, my dear. Never in the presence of the Grand Duchess, I beg. Oh, Papa, he's got a Grand Duchess. A Grand Duchess? My good girl, I've got three Grand Duchesses. Well, I'm sure. Papa, let go away. This is not a respectable court. All these Grand Dukes have their little fancies, my love. This potentate appears to be collecting wives. It's a pretty hobby. I should like to collect a few myself. 
Uh, have you such a thing as a catalogue of the museum? But I cannot permit Rudolph to keep a museum. Rudolph? Get along with you, I'm not Rudolph. Rudolph died yesterday. What? What's that? Quite suddenly, of a cardiac affection. Of a, of a cardiac, cardiac affection? affection? Yes, a pack of cardiac affection. He fought a statutory duel with me and lost. And I took over all his engagements, including this imperfectly preserved old lady to whom he has been engaged for the last three weeks. Three weeks? But I've been engaged to him for the last 20 years. 20, 20 years. years? It's all right, my love. They can't get over that. He's yours. Take him and hold him as tight as you can. My own. Oh, here's another, the fourth in four and 20 hours. Would anybody else like to marry me? You, ma'am, or you, anybody? I'm getting used to it. But let me tell you, ma'am. Why, oh, you impudent little hussy. Oh, here's another. Here's another. Poor oh, ladies, I am very sorry for you all. But you see, I have prior claim. Come, away we go. There's not a moment to be lost. <laughs> the bands not a bit of it i've revived the law for another century you didn't revive it you couldn't revive it well you're a pretty kind of fellow that's my life to shatter oh my little store of gold and silver recklessly you scatter oh you guzzle and you gormandize all day with cup and platter oh and eat my food and drink my wine especially the latter oh <laughs> But when compared with other crimes for which your head I'll batter, oh, this flippity dippity kind of a liberty scarcely seems to matter, oh. When My dainty bride, my bridey, let you wheedle and you flatter, oh, with coarse and clumsy compliment her senses, you bespatter, oh, you fascinate her tough old heart with vain and vulgar patter, oh, although the deuce confound you, you're unworthy to look at her, oh. <laughs> Even this compared with these that drive me mad as after oh, this flippity dippity kind of a liberty scarcely seems to matter oh. <laughs> For oh, you vulgar vagabond, you found of idle chatter, oh, you've done a deed on which I vow you won't get any fatter, oh, you fancy you've revived the law, me empty brag and chatter, oh, you can't, you shan't, you don't, you won't, you thing of rag and tatter, oh. <laughs> For this you suffer agonies like rats in clutch of rats, or oh, this liberty dippity kind of a liberty's quite another matter, oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you're an imposter, sir, a company rogue, sir. You, you never were, and in all human probability, never will be Grand Duke of Fennec anything. What? Never, never, never. Oh, my internal economy. That is absurd, you know. I fought the Grand Duke. He drew a king, and I drew an ace. He perished in inconceivable agonies on the spot. Now, as that is settled, we will go on with the wedding. It, it isn't settled. You, you can't. I, 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 oh, Dr. Tannhäuser, tell him, tell him I can't. Well, the fact is, there's been a little hmm, mistake here. On reference to the act that regulates statutory duels, I find it is expressly laid down that ace shall count invariably hmm, as lowest. As lowest, lowest, lowest. So you're the goest, goest, goest. 
Oh, what is the matter with me inside you? And am I to understand that I was on the point of marrying a, a dead man without knowing it? Oh, my love, what a narrow escape I've had. Oh, you are the Princess of Monte Carlo, and you've turned up just in time. Well, you're an attractive little girl, you know, but you're as poor as a rat. Well, Julia, as it seems that the law hasn't been revised, and as consequently, I shall come to life in about three minutes. My objection falls to the ground. Very well. That's all very well, but what is to become of me, Ludwig, if you're a dead man? Oh. But I'm not. Time's up. The act has expired. I've come to life. The parson is still in attendance, and we'll all be married directly. <laughs> performance of The Grand Duke by W.S. Gilbert and Arthur Sullivan. Rudolph was played by Peter Pratt. Ernest Dumkopf was sung by Kenneth Bowen and spoken by Dinsdale Landon. Ludwig was sung by John Heddle Nash and spoken by John Sharp. Dr. Tannhäuser was sung by Leslie Fison and spoken by Michael Spice. The Prince of Monte Carlo was sung by Neil Howlett and spoken by Wilfred Carter. Ben Hashbaz was sung by Don Paulin and spoken by Timothy Harley. The Herald was sung by John Noble. The Princess of Monte Carlo was sung by Ursula Connors and spoken by Jane Wenham. The Baroness von Krakenfeld was sung by Jean Allister and spoken by Margaret Gordon. Julia Jellicoe was played by Laura Sarti. Lisa was sung by Elizabeth Robinson and spoken by Diana Olson. Other members of Ernest Dumkopf's theatrical company was sung by Valerie Heath Davis, Christine Parker, Gloria Jennings and Shirley Minty, and spoken by Eva Haddon and Jane Wenham. The Chamberlains, nobles, actors and actresses were the John McCarthy singers. You also heard the BBC Concert Orchestra, leader Arthur Levins. The performance was conducted by Stanford Robinson and produced by Michael Moores. Jean Allister and Laura Sarti, broadcast by permission of the Glyndebourne Festival Opera.